Hello everybody. Today is Thursday, February 4th, 2021, around 9 o'clock a.m. It's 34 Fahrenheit, 1 degree Celsius. Just got off the Orange Line train in Boston at Community College Station. And today I'll be walking around Charlestown, going to the Bunker Hill Monument, as well as the USS Constitution. That train is inbound going into downtown Boston. So I'm going to exit over to the left here. These doors are automatic, motion detected. The fare for the Boston subway currently is $2.40. Oh, wow, it's a direct connection to the community college. Not bad if you're attending school here. But my destination is right there at that obelisk bunker hill memorial this is the highway to get into downtown boston So this is actually called the Bunker Hill Community College. Oh my gosh, this is a bad intersection to cross over. Hopefully the lights all work out in my favor. Or I could take that pedestrian overpass. No, I don't want to go all the way over there now. Looks like the traffic's clearing up. Let's take the, push the button. If I hurry, all right. I can see why they put the pedestrian overpass over there. This ramp makes it a little bit inconvenient. Oh wait, there's a staircase on the other side too, but they need that for the people on the wheelchairs. By the way, over there, that's the Zaykin Bridge crossing the Charles River. I got a glimpse of the structure from over here. So I wonder what the best way for me to get to the Bunker Hill Monument is. But basically that monument signifies a very important battle during the American Revolutionary War in 1775. It was between the colonists at the time and the British. And even though the British won the Battle of Bunker Hill, 
they suffered many more losses than the Americans and it completely changed the British thinking on whether or not they can attack heavily defended positions. But Battle of Bunker Hill, the Americans took over this area because it was a very valuable defensive area, high point of view, a lot of cover, and the British suffered greatly because of the defense of the colonists and the area. So we will go see that monument. Maybe there's some uh, plaque there we can read. The homes here look pretty quaint and cozy. Also a neighborhood shopping mall here. Whole Foods Market, that's very convenient. Verizon, CVS, Dunkin' Donuts, of course. Also, I believe the end of the Freedom Trail is at the USS Constitution or the Bunker Hill Monument. One or the other, I forget. But we will go see that as well. I think at this street I'll turn right. Oh, this is Main Street. Okay. So I'll turn right. We'll get a good look at Main Street. You can see why this area is called Bunker Hill and the Charlestown neighborhood because it's sloping up here after Main Street. Oh no, I don't think I'm going to be able to make this light. Alright, button press. Wait. Yeah, definitely another confusing intersection. I guess both sides, they turn green for pedestrians at the same time. Uh, is it quiet enough to cross? Maybe. I'll go. Oh, this is a, a branch of the Boston Public Library, Charlestown branch. This seems like a very quiet town. Here's a Starbucks coffee. Right now, Boston is doing indoor dining, but at 25% capacity. So here it says Church Court Private Way, and I don't think this will go through. Yeah, it's a private area. I can't go through that street, but. We got some information here. This used to be the most important commercial building in Charleston. Charlestown, 
in 1876. I always say Charleston, but it's Charlestown. According to some viewers who watched my channel and replied to on the live chats. Maybe I can turn left on the next street. But definitely a very charming neighborhood. We have these brick lined sidewalks now. Quarter Street. Let's make a left on Quarter Street. Are we going to be able to see the monument? No, I don't see it. But even though I don't see the monument, this is a very charming street. Sloping up all the way to the end. So now I am climbing the historic Bunker Hill. Different styles of buildings, brick, wood. I think these lamps are even gas powered. Here's a we uh, weird naming convention, Cordes Street Avenue. Or maybe it's, yeah, definitely strange. They named it Street and Avenue. You can get a workout just climbing through the streets in this neighborhood. Here's Boyle Street. Oh my gosh, it's so steep over here. I'm gonna have to turn this camera around when I get to the top. Oh, very fitting name for a street at the top of this hill, High Street. High Street, for sure. Uh, let's turn around. Yeah, I can tell why it's High Street. But the Bunker Hill Monument is over there. I see the top of it. We'll head over that way. Oh, the street's actually called Monument Square. And there it is. Bunker Hill Monument. I don't know if this park is open, but we can try for sure. Should be multiple ways to get into this park. Let's see. Like I said earlier, I'd also like to know if there is a plaque here that tells us about the history of this place. Aha! Bunker Hill Monuments, Boston National Historic Park, National Park Service. And it is open. Let's look at the signs here. 
COVID-19 safety alert and the park regulations. Let's head in. United States gates. On this hill, the Continental Militia fought the heroically fought heroically on June 17, 1775, protected by an earth and timber redoubt laid out by Colonel Richard Gridley, the Army's first chief engineer. The Americans killed or wounded nearly half of the attacking British force. The defenders ran out of gunpowder on the third assault and withdrew. And here it is. United States Gate from 1775 to 1975. And here is the Bunker Hill Monument. Really cool history, right? And it's also pretty nice. We can come here in the winter time. We see all this snow around. Although I can imagine when the British came in June, there wasn't snow at all. I guess this is a visitor center. Let's walk around this monument. Even check out this statue over here. As I thought, we have some historical information. I'll let you read it because it's a lot. And you can see why this area is called Bunker Hill because we get a very good view of downtown Boston from here, from the top. And I don't know who this person is, but we're about to find out. Also, you can see the Freedom Trail here. This Freedom Trail starts in downtown Boston at the Massachusetts State House. And then it uh, goes all the way over here, going through many historical sites. So this is Colonel William Prescott, June 17, 1775. And it says here, the decisive day has come on which the fate of America depends. Abigail Adams. Don't fire till you see the whites of their eyes. Here's Breeze Hill, site of the Battle of Bunker Hill, fought 17, June 17, 1775. All right, so let me find out where the USS Constitution is and I'll make my way over there. Or maybe I could just follow the Freedom Trail. No, wait, the end of the Freedom Trail is here. I'll just follow the Freedom Trail going backwards. Why don't I do that? 
I know I probably won't have a video covering the entire Freedom Trail on this channel, but you can see bits and pieces of it as I um, put up the videos from the different neighborhoods and parts of Boston. So, I'm not going to follow the Freedom Trail exactly, but I will definitely uh, be in its general vicinity. But the Freedom Trail is basically a brick lined uh, marking. that goes through all the historic sites of Boston and comes up here to the Battle of Bunker Hill historic site. All right, so the Freedom Trail actually goes there and crosses here. So we will follow this brick path until we get to the USS Constitution. I would imagine if it was a warmer month, there'll be a lot more people walking here. Now I wonder what happens if like, oh here. <laughs> They painted over the Freedom Trail brick. I was wondering, like, what happens if a homeowner needs to repair the sidewalk in front of their building and the Freedom Trail is there? Are they obligated to put the bricks back? Look at this. This isn't even brick. It's just painted on. So, I don't know. Does the city of Boston, like, give the bricks back for free? Or replace it at no cost. Something to think about. And Freedom Trail goes this way. Like even over here, this isn't brick, it's just painted on. And the Freedom Trail splits in two. One goes that way and then another one goes here, but I guess I'll take the route through the park. It's a little bit more scenic. I don't know what this is. This is in honor of the men of Charlestown who fought in the War of 1861 for the preservation of the Union. Very cool. So the Freedom Trail goes to the right now and the other one went to the left. So hopefully this trail is leading me the right way. All right, now we're going this way. It might be a little bit difficult to see it because of the snow. Got a firehouse here. And a really spectacular looking church. We'll see the name of this church once I get to the end of this block here. I see a sign there. This is the Good Shepherd School, St. Catherine of Siena Chapel.
All right, so. Yeah, this Freedom Trail is definitely leading me to the USS Constitution. I just had to double check and make sure. And it also leads me to some sparrows, it seems like. Oh, we're back to Main Street. But I didn't even feel like I walked down a hill. I walked up the hill to get here. Or to, to Bunker Hill, but I guess it leveled off somehow. Huh. Uh, looks like this is a historic area. Deacon Larkin House. In 1790s, Georgian residence was built for Deacon John Larkin, a patriot best remembered for his role in Paul Revere's legendary Midnight Ride. Ah, it was Larkin's horse that carried Revere out to Lexington and Concord to warn Committee of Safety of the Approaching British Troops. So this is the house. Also, you have to note that it might be hard to park around here because many of these spaces are reserved for resident parking only. By permits. So I think by the USS Constitution area, we'll be able to see the boat there and also Boston Logan International Airport. This bus stop is labeled as the city square. Let's see if that's the case. That's the John Harvard Mall. Yeah, I can see this as the city square, Main Street. City Square Park, okay. All right, so the Freedom Trail goes into City Square Park. And then it goes to the right and in. But then it stops. Probably picks up on the other side of the park. Has to. Oh, some nice looking snowmen there. Someone took a lot of time to decorate the snowmen with buttons. City square, continuity and change. The Great House and Three Cranes Tavern. Oh, at least they have a sign for the Freedom Trail here. So you don't lose it. So we go straight. And I actually see downtown Boston now in front of me. TD Garden, the Zaykeen Bridge, as well as the Verizon building behind there. It's 
so I know I'm headed in the general vicinity. Let's see where it goes now. Aha. Here we are. Wait. Now the Freedom Trail goes over here. But the Freedom Trail goes that way and the sidewalk is closed. So, cross here for temporary bridge. All right, bad detour, but I guess we gotta take it, no other choice. They even painted a red line here for the Freedom Trail. Wait. I don't see anyone coming. So here's the Freedom Trail, the rerouted Freedom Trail. I know where we are. This is Washington Street, which I walked before. Well, I guess I'll walk this bridge because I'm already here. But um, I thought I was going to go to the USS Constitution. But there's the Zakin Bridge over there. I mean, maybe we'll see that historic site on this bridge but I wouldn't know where it is we're walking into downtown Boston now Looks like the city is doing a lot of work on this bridge. Cyclists have to share the entire right lane with traffic. That's a little bit intimidating. I've walked over this bridge before on my live stream during the snowstorm. The whole temporary walkway shakes as a truck goes by. Well, I guess I'll end this video at the North End neighborhood of Boston, I guess I'll be going to. Huh, Colonel Richard Gridley Locks. That's kind of 
strange. I guess they have to hold back the water sometimes. State Police Marine Section. Not a very sightful bridge. You can't even see the traffic on the other side because of this fence. But this is only a temporary bridge. I don't expect it to be here that much longer once they finish. There's the TD Garden, zooming in. That's where the Boston Celtics play, basketball team. And I think the Boston Bruins hockey team plays there as well. I don't really think that waterfront view is that great. You just see traffic and the Zaken Bridge. That side is a little bit better to me. But anyway, I'm in downtown Boston now. There's a brave cyclist that just crossed over the bridge. So the new North Washington Street Bridge will be here in 2023. And it can't come soon enough. It looks very nice by that image there. All right, so I am at the intersection of Causeway Street and Washington Street. And since I'm out of Charlestown now and walked over the bridge, I will be ending this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to smash the like button for me. Subscribe for some more videos like these. And I will see you next time. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.